Good morning, everyone. Bonjour. <laughs> um, so, I'm going to speak in English, but I won't risk speaking in French. Um, so, our first speaker for today is um, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, who's going to talk. He's a chest physician from Mauritius, and he's going to speak to us on tuberculosis in Mauritius. Thank you. Good morning and bonjour, uh, exactly. Good morning. How are you? Even I want to talk in English because uh, though I'm from Mauritius, people who don't know actually I'm living there, but I'm from India. So I've been trying to pick up uh, local languages, but then still to do presentation in, from, in French is quite a challenging thing. But I will try to convey the message uh, through our um, presentations. Uh, I'm going to talk about, thank you very much for SBI for inviting me to give an uh, opportunity to talk about um, epidemiology of tuberculosis in, in uh, being a part of Indian Ocean. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit of epidemiology and how do we manage tuberculosis in, in, in Mauritius. If you look at the geographical um, uh, location of Mauritius, uh, and the Union and other islands, uh, we are living in a, in a high endemic uh, region where uh, in, on the west side we have an uh, African continent where the, uh, the incidence of tuberculosis is enormous. In Southeast Asia we have uh, uh, millions of cases, but uh, in Mauritius um, for the last more than 15 years the incidence of tuberculosis is, is, is quite low. Um, just like in the Union Island, uh, the reason probably the, the, the uh, socioeconomic status has uh, really picked up for the last 20 years and that has helped uh, to reduce the uh, communicable diseases. And in 2010, the incidence of um, uh, tuberculosis in Mauritius was 10 per 100,000 uh, people. And this is like almost same um, at the same rate. It's not changing, we haven't seen much change in the incidence and the notified cases. Compared to um, other endemic, uh, other other region in the in the same uh, uh, territory, but that does play a role in the number of cases we see in, the, in our country in, in Mauritius. So overall, the, the burden of tuberculosis in Mauritius is the latest figures of 2015. It's a low burden country. It has a 1.3 million population, and the incidence rate is is almost quite stable on 9.4. Uh, per 100,000 population. The number of cases we notified in 2015 uh, was 129, and we do have a TB and HIV co infection. And last, and last year, the number of cases were 14. We, uh, what I'm talking about is that you're living in a, in a high endemic region, so we do have a lot of uh, migrant workers coming from those high endemic uh, countries, and they're living there, they're working there for a long time, and then they do present with the uh, Tuberculosis, and then we have seen the upsurge of tuberculosis in, in migrant workers. So, in certain years, we do have a lot of cases in, uh, in foreigners. Uh, and the last year, we saw the number has almost gone around 20% of the total total incidence. So, we had 23 cases, which were which were like more foreign uh, 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 personals, those working in the textile factories and other construction jobs. We have mostly we have pulmonary tuberculosis, but we do see extra pulmonary tuberculosis, which is mostly spine TB, and few are like pleural, extra pulmonary pleural tuberculosis. Uh, fortunately, the um, MDR multi resistant tuberculosis is still not a big concern, but we do have uh, sporadic cases uh, on and off. So, if we look at the, the trend for the last five, uh, uh, from 2005 to 2015. The number of notified cases haven't changed much. The, the, the graph is almost saying though we want to, it to go down, uh, but then fortunately, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, it's staying there. The reason probably the multiple the record, we do have um, the multiple influx of patients from different uh, part of the world, which also play a role. The overall incidence rate has uh, been stable for us more than 10 years. Mortality, mortality of uh, uh, with the tuberculosis, we have been able to uh, cut down, or we try to see the recurrent patients. Mostly patients, they are 
following treatment properly and the and the and the, and the death rate is really negligible. Well, we know that okay, there are uh, those are the comorbidity factors like HIV. People are living with HIV is a concern to us. The number of HIV in in, in Mauritius uh, is going up. Um, they are under, under the program TBHIV program though, but we know that okay, there are other factors. Diabetes is a big big issue in in Mauritius. Now almost forty percent of uh, population is diabetic, and the uncontrolled diabetes is a risk factor. Nutrition is not really a big issue now these days, but still we know that it increases. Uh, still in certain part of the, um, you know, the, the society and the localities, they are overcrowding and, and living standards are not so great, so that increases the risk of tuberculosis. Tobacco smoke is another problem in Mauritius. We have the highest consumption of smoking in, in, in Mauritius, if we look at the African continent, around 1 million cigarettes, cigarettes six, six are being imported every year. Uh, and the use of alcohol is, is quite high in, in Mauritius, around 3,000 um, ton liter of uh, um, alcohol is being consumed every month. So that's, these are the big issues in, in Mauritius and that really plays in the overall cohort of tuberculosis what we see in our, in our patients. So mostly the 50% of our patients who are to perform tuberculosis, they have history of alcohol. The 20% of patients out of them are diabetic with tuberculosis. We have uh, we also have a strong, uh, very very systematic contact tracing program. So for all index cases, so we do find sometimes the contact patients who are already infected and having tuberculosis. HIV, as I repeated, the, the number of HIV patients are, are on the rise, and we are all uh, doing active screening and uh, intensified um, the findings. So we are picking up more cases in HIV. Migrant worker is, is an issue uh, because we are getting a lot of uh, migrant workers from uh, high endemic uh, countries who are having high level of tuberculosis. Others are people who are living in, in, the, in the compromised facilities like uh, prisoners old age homes and people who are regularly uh, smokers and everybody. So <clears throat> though it is a it's a it's a concentrated concentrated epidemic, epidemic uh, of uh, uh, tuberculosis in, in high risk of infection. The trend of uh, tuberculosis in HIV um, is as we 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 were expecting that the number of cases are going up. We have seen the upsurge of tuberculosis in HIV patients. For the last 10 years, if we see the number of cases are a little bit on the rise. In 2005, we had um, TB and HIV co-infection number. We had three patients separate. In 2013, the number has really gone up. Um, uh, reason probably we uh, we really could not really see the, the cause. Probably maybe that we have started more case finding, intensive finding. We have started working more closely with HIV people to um, look for the disease. Or maybe the, the people who are uh, patients who are following HIV programs, they are defaulting a lot. So there is an issue of um, follow up uh, both the uh, HIV high risk group people. But then, fortunately, the, the last two years, the number has come down uh, in, uh, in HIV, in TB cases have really come down. And we hope that the trend goes a little bit stable or goes down. When we look at the, the distribution of uh, uh, patients of uh, um, tuberculosis in HIV, it's a male dominant disease. The HIV is a very uh, concentrated epi uh, epidemic in the IVDA patients, uh, the sex workers, and uh, people who are having uh, um, same sex, uh, same sex um, sexual activities. So, male are the main people uh, in, in our group of our group who are affected with tuberculosis. If you look at the, all the years, for the last five years, the male dominance is, is, is there. Uh, trend of foreigners, as I said, the number of cases of uh, uh, foreign regions uh, are in, in, in a little bit of a roller coaster. We do see some upsurge. Uh, we are trying to work more closely with the immigration policies, with the more occupational physicians to put in place. Um, though data is there to do uh, yearly or six monthly examination of patients who are high risk people, but sometimes it's not being followed. 
And the age distribution of our cohort group is, is uh, also not uh, very variable. We have seen the capability of 50% of our patients uh, lying in the group of um, around 35 to 50, 55 years age group. If you see beyond all the, uh, these graphs, with the number of patients who are uh, above 30 years are major, major uh, contributors, we do have very sporadically like teenager patients recently we have seen, but the, the pediatric tuberculosis is not a problem in, in Mauritius. Um, probably the reason is that the okay, incidence is down, the, the BCG coverage is there. Um, so the good control of uh, adult TB does give you an indicator of uh, not having pediatric tuberculosis. Uh, and the overall, the sex distribution, if you look at the males, are definitely um, outnumbers out the female patients in total number. The ratio is, is almost um, for the last five, six years, it's two is to one. Um, in 2008, we had around uh, um, 83 male patients who had tuberculosis. Uh, and this trend is almost the almost same uh, in coming year and all those years. Uh, we did one study to find out that okay, if there is any specific region in, in, the, in, in Mauritius which are more heavily concentrated in tuberculosis cases. Though we have seen in Phillips, they come from all over the island, but certain places like Google, those are, which are highly populated, and certain places where there is a um, um, concentrated epidemic, epidemic of HIV, IV disease are there. We have seen that okay, those areas do contribute more in, in tuberculosis. Um, is and tuberculosis um, um, disease. As I said, again, the, the MDR, multi drug resistant tuberculosis, is not a big issue. We had two cases in 2011. It was uh, foreign cases, mostly <coughs> got uh, from uh, abroad. And uh, I remember we, we had to deal with, uh, with a more surgical intervention in these cases. In 2012, we didn't have uh, zero cases, and last. Uh, um, Two years we haven't seen one case of MDR, which is uh, mostly the, the lo in the locals. This year we got two cases of multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, but they were primary drug resistant tuberculosis, primary drug resistant tuberculosis because they never had an exposure to tuberculosis. We found that okay, the that the person was traveling a lot to 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 surrounding uh, our neighboring country, especially Madagascar. We thought that okay, he might have contracted drug resistant tuberculosis from there. We did the gene experts and the first culture resist culture sensitivity shows that again is resistant to all four drugs. Though we are now on treatment with a um, second line drugs. So in Mauritius we do have a, uh, our own program, National Tuberculosis Control Program. The, the, the main objective of National Tuberculosis Control Program as it is the case, same as the case we are following the WHO SADC region to harmonize the program and the idea is that we could maintain in the case reduction rate of 85% which we do need. We are able to clear more than our 90% of patients about no new severe positive cases and we are trying to, we have already our very less mortality though morbidity is an issue and we are trying to um, you know, develop, uh, uh, prevent the development of drug resistance. The reason is that okay, this is more of a centralized uh, unit. I will let you know, tell you in the next slide that how do we function in, in Mauritius. That uh, helps in harmonizing the treatment and less up and down about the prescription. So that um, helps to prevent drug uh, drug resistance, prevent uh, <coughs> drug resistance. So this is the organization set up in Mauritius actually. The, the TB is a communicable disease treated by uh, uh, Ministry of Health and there are chest clinics who operate under Ministry of Health. Uh, we are uh, around seven uh, specialists uh, in the Ministry of Health respiratory physicians. All TB cases are uh, diagnosed and treated by chest physicians. In, in Mauritius. So chest clinic is a backbone of the treatment. Uh, all the strategies are being planned at, at the level of chest clinic. Chest clinic is also has uh, 
its own hospital where patients are being treated, investigated. There are 30 patients, uh, 38 patient bed is available for patients to uh, diagnose and give them treatment in an intensive phase. We do have uh, uh, regular uh, OPDs to look for uh, those cases in the in the periphery or in the, in the region and the all over the region. We have uh, our consultations in all the five regional hospitals. And there is a specialized national laboratory dedicated for tuberculosis in Mauritius. Those who does um, all spital examinations, gene expert, and um, the culture. And it's um, well uh, connected with the specialized pharmaceutical laboratory, which is uh, run by the central pharmacy. Uh, those who take the procurement of the anti tubercular drugs, first line and second lines. We don't have any problem for the drugs availability all year long. We do have stocks, and, and the BCG is being procured from the from that unit. And Chess Clinic also organized um, uh, home visits. Patients who go back from the from hospital once they are converted, so there is a home with a team which follow them up for the uh, throughout their their treatment course. So to make sure that they are taking medications properly. And same time they are following, they are coming for follow-up, regular follow-up for spital examination, X-rays, and complete the treatments. So there are specialized nurses which are working uh, for, in the chest clinic to do the dots and uh, counseling. And uh, systematically, the one patient is diagnosed of tuberculosis, spital sphere positive. The systematically all screenings of contacts, of household contacts, the work contacts, all the Anywhere the, where there's a big uh, outbreak, uh, the contact screening is done to find out uh, any um, you know the uh, case which is already infected, so that we can take actions uh, quickly. Chest clinic also uh, participates in the administration uh, uh, procurement of drugs uh, to look into the quality of uh, antitubercular drugs. And there is um, proper, uh, there is a one dedicated statistician who, who records all the all those uh, cases and then lies with the Ministry of Health to, to update on the on the on the on the, on the website. And at the same time, the we are also liaising with the WHO and the African region, South region to harmonise programs. We do have an annual meetings in the in um, in, in, in Johannesburg. To participate about our programs and how do we handle our tuberculosis program. And very um, closely, we also work with the AIDS unit for all those um, combined activities of TB and HIV to prevent tuberculosis in HIV. Um, the laboratory services, as I said, there is a dedicated laboratory, one laboratory service, although the WHO say that okay, there should be a one TB laboratory for each. 100,000 or 1 million population, I think 100,000 population. But we see that okay, one, one, two, one TV lab is really functioning uh, and doing its job well. Uh, every year we are doing around 2,000 spital examinations. It's all uh, for the new and the prevalent cases. 95% uh, of our new cases are spital sphere positive. And all the culture, solid culture, algae media, is performed on all spitting sphere positives and we look for the gene expert, we look for the uh, drug first line drug sensitivity for all patients. For the last two, three, four years now we have our gene expert and um, that has, has really helped us uh, to pick up uh, some uh, like primary drug resistant tuberculosis. We, we, though we don't have um, primary drug resistant, but this helped us to catch up, catch up this cases which we saw this year. And the PCR is really helping us to find, um, you know, the uh, atypical tuberculosis in HIV, and especially next to pulmonary tuberculosis, we have uh, been diagnosing some tuberculosis meningitis with the uh, PCR with the CSF examination. So that has helped us a lot. We recently have acquired uh, media to do second line drug sensitivity this year. Uh, so, so we are almost um, up to date with the with the drug sensitivity pattern uh, in, in merchant. The diagnosis is, is done clinically with all the means to do sputum's uh, examination, sputum sphere positive results. It's clinically, chest X-ray is done uh, systematically. Sputum examination is done in each and every suspected patients. We also do perform bronchoscopies in patients who 
who are highly suspicious and spitting is negative to make sure that okay, we are uh, not making any positive accelerated tuberculosis. CT and MRI, MRI scans are done for uh, when required or uh, patients who have suffered with tuberculosis. Prolapses and one two testing is done for, for not only for screening but even for um, uh, to just to in, in any cases of uh, accepted with tuberculosis. This is a this is a place actually it's quite an old uh, setup to to treat tuberculosis patients in, in, in Mauritius so far. It's this this is a hospital. Chest Hospital, uh, the Kudalo Hospital, Chest Hospital, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is in 1864. Um, and this building is, uh, was built um, as a sanitary approach. Uh, the, the inside, the, the concepts have, the, the, the new walls now, but, uh, but the patients, once diagnosed, feeling positive, they, by public health uh, act, they are supposed to stay in isolation, and then they're those most patients, they go to, to Kudalo Hospital. Treatment is, uh, is according to WHO programs. Uh, the treatment is free of cost to all of uh, patients who have tuberculosis. It's a directly observed treatment short course for the intensive phase at least. Um, and we do have first line and second line drugs available. Uh, in patients still, they stay in the hospital till they become uh, spitum negative. And we have even um, taken uh, surgical interventions in patients who had MDR-TB. Those who were taking time to convert and had a cavitary lung disease. We did a lobectomy on those patients to convert them. The a few words about the prevention of tuberculosis. We do have a plan for uh, not only to treat active tuberculosis, we do have a, a contact tracing systematically. All contact tracings are done if there is any infection uh, or any, any case has been. Uh, infected or own diseases developing like primary tuberculosis we try to curtail that we do a screening of high risk groups in prisoners and in the old age homes and psychiatric hospitals what we do is that okay in those contact tracing we do mon to chest x-ray and in case we need in case there is suspicion of tuberculosis or lesions we do take examinations but if there is a now um, active tuberculosis sign of active tuberculosis all those contacts, close contacts, especially close contacts like me and the family contacts are being put on chemoprophylaxis uh, to <coughs> curtail the infection. And uh, we have a closed program with the uh, TBH and IV as, as dedicated three eyes to intensify active case finding in HIV. That's why we have started looking more cases in, in HIV. And we have recently we have introduced isoniazid prophylaxis treatment in all HIV patients who are on treatment on an on antiretroviral treatment, uh, and then we do have a um, we have to the continuous education program for the uh, doctors who are treating um, HIV patients to how to how to give education to the patients to curtail and or TB infection in HIV patients once they are in hospital. The goal of uh, this all this program, NTC program, is to reduce uh, the uh, tuberculosis incidence of tuberculosis in Mauritius by at least by 25 percent where we stand now. And to do that, what we actually we are looking to to do more, you know, the increase the TB diagnostic in early stages. We are seeing that our patients are coming a little late to us, and that's probably the reason they are the pool of tuberculosis patients are still in in, in, the, in, the, in the community. We are catching them a little late, but I believe we need to catch them a little earlier. We, want, we have actually increased the, our um, uh, capacity of the uh, drug uh, lab to increase uh, drug tested testing, but we don't have rapid culture tests. We are trying to acquire more rapid liquid culture areas to have our drug to report faster. We are trying to work with the optimized treatment capacities and uh, all high risk groups uh, systematically. Though we are trying to uh, uh, develop certain programs, uh, we don't have certain uh, how to the end national tuberculosis control program. How to how to do these? Uh, 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 you know, the systematically if patients are in in, in prisons and, and uh, in the high uh, hospital care uh, workers. We are also working closely with SADC region uh, around, around 17 countries where we are trying to harmonize the program. So 
so that there is no um, multiplication of uh, strategies. So that patient once patient transfer from one area to another area, they, they follow the same pattern. So and then the vision of uh, um, in the Mauritius is that okay, we are looking forward to free Mauritius from tuberculosis, which looks a little bit uh, positive in case we can reinforce our programs, especially the infection control programs. Uh, maybe we can get further testing like IGRA to do it like, to, to catch those uh, latent tuberculosis patients. So the mission is to reduce incidence of prevalence of tuberculosis so that we can go towards elimination in, in, uh, of tuberculosis in Mauritius in coming uh, time. Thank you for your attention. Because I think generally about only half the patients who actually have active TB are speaking to me are positive. So how do you explain that? Well, I think the, the, uh, the reason what we have seen is that like our cases are coming a little late to us. They are almost having, most, most of them they are having pulmonary, huge extensive pulmonary involvement. So the chances of, um, you know, spinal positivity is coming up. That's, and it's a, negative, it's a negative sign also in that, okay, the, the reason is that okay, why the incidence is not going down is that they're catching down a little later, though with the aspirin positive. Is it not possible that you are seeing patients who are smear positive and they're not being diagnosed as TB but it's classified as something else until they get positive? Because that is of concern and the other question related to that is that if everyone suspected of TB have bronchoscopy when the screening smear is negative. Well, and, and, and we do we do have if there is a radiological presentation and the student is negative, we do consider them for bronchoscopy. But as the the uh, we have cases that okay, those who have uh, cohort they do come to um, hospitals for uh, maybe in the initial phases they have been to hospital, but then sometimes the doctors have missed it maybe in the periphery. And once they, you miss them for one episode, probably they come after two months, you know, the group is very volatile. As the group is very 35 years, you know, the working group people, once you miss them in one episode sometimes, so you might miss them for like two months. And by the time, the most of the, most of our, if uh, I could have shown you the uh, radiological presentations of tuberculosis patients in, in Mauritius, it's, it's very alarming what we have seen. It's very extensive tuberculosis. So, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the question about the recurrence recurrence of tuberculosis, the number of cases you are treating, how many, what's the rate of the recurrence rate? Um, we have seen that okay, there is a concern, there, there are two issues. When we have a default uh, patients, there are about four persons of patients who are defaulting on on our treatment and those are the people who are coming with back with the relapses but the number is not really big if you see that uh, we did not classify them but uh, they are thinking around, around less than two or three or four or five cases a year what about the bcg vaccination it's it's um, fully implemented. it's fully implemented at, at birth for 100 percent coverage at birth. yeah at birth uh, Ajib. Yes, thank you. Um, one more fellow in the comment. We tried to give us a comment about the late presentation of TB. But I, I'm a bit surprised that if they present at the local hospital, that they don't contact the chest physician. You know, that's a suspicion. I mean, the chest doctor must suggest something. So, so that's one thing. And secondly, um, you said that all patients who that come to your unit yeah. or admitted to treatment. Is that correct? Yes. Um, I, mean, I mean, why is this practice? Because, you know, you don't have to admit to Exactly. And then you can admit them, you know, you've got issues about the disease and then social problems. I guess a lot of those people probably um, are not looked after, so they need to look after. So that would be 
is full of mission. But I, I, I don't think that that's what we can do. Yeah, for the first one, yeah, um, we uh, exactly, and if we, if we see that, like the structure of the uh, history of health structure, the way it works, not only for tuberculosis, for even in general, there are, there are around 120 area health centers in Mauritius for 1.3 million people population. So it's a very walking distance place, uh, area health center dispensaries to go and see doctors, which is free of cost. But despite of that, uh, we have seen that again, the person who has gone to dispensary may be suspected of uh, uh, having tuberculosis they have not been catched uh, at that point. The reason probably maybe the, though we do, we do have a total um, awareness program, CMEs, talks on radios, but well, I think it's maybe they really need more um, awareness among medical staff so that they suspect cases of tuberculosis in each and every one. But that's a concern we are always talking about in our junior doctors. The second issue of uh, isolation, uh, I think it's a it's quite a debatable issue for the last couple of years we have been talking about is it really an obligation for someone to go to put the hospital for tuberculosis treatment and isolation but that's a public health act has not been changed um, but it says that okay, isolation it does not say that okay, you have to go to put the one hospital so there are some cases who who don't want to go to put the so they go and stay in isolation Okay, I'll take one last question. Is it Thank you. Uh, how do we do chemo uh, prophylaxis in post contact uh, screening? Oh, we give um, um, isomerized um, like um, for six months. We have chosen two programs. One is isomerized for six months in close contact. And we have uh, opted a new uh, combination like insulinized and rifampicin for three months, depending upon the the, the clinical picture. Yeah. How do you choose who to treat? Who to treat? Okay, we we do close contacts, family contacts, yes. systematically. Systematically. There is no, no criteria for one, two, or reading and everything. Just, just to remove, just to uh, make sure that they don't have active tuberculosis. You perform just this way in close contact. Just this way? Do you perform just this way? Just x -ray. yes, just x ray one, two, and the. Yes, that's okay. Okay, well, thank you very much. I think it's an impressive TV program. I just hope that it's not the tip of the iceberg of many undetected cases given the high sputum smear positive rate in those that you're recording as active TV.